we are looking at this process of release in today's practice. We are going to focus on digestion and on the whole abdominal area. But the conversation that we're really having around um, autumn right now is not only looking for stability and groundedness as we've been talking for, for days, weeks, and all of our other sessions, but really looking for um, or exploring release and letting go. And in autumn, there are many opportunities to practice, to contemplate this sutra teaching that all things must pass. And in yoga and Ayurveda, it is believed that, um, yes, all things must pass. All things must move through the process of digestion. Not only food, everything our senses come into contact with what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we smell, what we think. Um, all our emotions need to go through this process of digestion. And we know that complete digestion can only happen when the nervous system is in the state of rest and digest, when we're not in this holding on survival mode of fight, flight, or freeze. And this expands our conversation a little bit into um, talking about sort of this area of the abdomen, not only talking about sort of like digestion and food and byproducts that we need to release through the gut, but tension, stored stuff in the body. We talk a lot about how the body keeps score. The body holds our life experience. The body holds our stress and tension. And you guys have often heard me say, if, or if you read Deep Listening, that tension that we carry is like wearing too tight clothing, right? We're bound in that clothing and it, it squeezes our gut and that squeezes our whole body. And it, we, we hold our breath when, when we're in that state of too tight clothing wearing, which limits our digestion even more. We hold on to all sorts of stories that keep us from flowing and evolving and changing along with life. This is the story of being human though. And that's why we have all of our practices is to constantly return to the state where we can optimize or, or reinstate digestion. Now, since we're gonna be looking at the gut in our practice today and um, the, the abdomen, the pelvis, the seat of vata that we look at during this Ayurvedic season, vata season, that this area houses all of our major organs, not just the digestive organs, but all of our organs that really are responsible for our survival. Not only our personal well being survival, but literally the organs that are responsible for our survival, for promoting life on the planet. Right? So it's really natural and, it, and, and proper to carry some level of protection and tension that, that, that guards these very essential and precious organs that, that, that perpetuate our survival. But it makes this conversation about fight or flight, abdomen, rest and digest really uh, a little more complex. Um, so put on top of that, that our abdomen is also known as our emotional center, our gut emotions, our feelings live here. And um, you know that we spend a lot of time deciding what feelings we wanna work with and also bracing ourselves and limiting our experience of feelings that are not so comfortable about ourselves, about others, about the environment. So there's, there's a tremendous amount of life here that we're working with in our gut that is easily triggered into the fight or flight stage. Yet we do want to look at, you know, how we can let go of this gripping in a healthy way, um, create more, more sort of like postural techniques, lifestyle, body mechanics, whether it's sitting or walking, in a way that allows our gut to be at ease and rest in our pelvis and sort of have um, a fluidity, right? So we can have a lot of diaphragmatic movement, not only that stimulates our breath, but literally massages all the organs below it. And um, having said that, as we, as we work in the gut, we do wanna create this sort of 
uh, washing machine effect, the squeeze and release and squeeze and release. So we're going to release tension in the gut, maybe the gripping around the organs, relax it using an oscillation, not only the squeeze and release to break up the tension, but we'll use it to build warmth and agony, digestive fire. And we'll also sort of stretch the space open and let it rest again and stretch it open and let it rest. So it will be an active practice, but I want you to think about, you know, six pack abs is not what we're going for. That will limit digestion too. But we are looking for how do we gather into our abs and find some stability and strength and squeeze and release without triggering this nervous system response. So let me get a little bit of beverage here. I have um, two blocks, three folded blankets. They're folded into long rectangles and then folded in half again. We'll use them mostly towards the end of the practice, but you might want them available for knee support. So it's just a long rectangle folded in half. I'll leave the stack at the back of my mat. I also have a strap. The strap is about um, my thighs. I have a loop that I'm, we're gonna use in our constructive rest at the end, which is about thigh distance apart if you wanna set up your strap a little bit. And I have um, the extra weight that I've been using the past few classes just to create some groundedness in our relaxation pose. Okay, so we are going to begin in a seated position, Baddha Konasana. The soles of the feet together, and we're going to wiggle back till we get up on our sitting bones with a bit of space between the heels and the pelvis. You can sit on a blanket here now if you wish. Taking your hands to your shins, and we're just Gonna take a few moments to allow the breath to come in all the way down, feeling movement all the way down into your pelvis and belly. Feeling the entire abdomen expand in all directions, all the way up through the torso and following your breath out, just three or four gently exaggerated breaths. Feeling the whole 3D shape inside you lifting and spreading. And releasing. I'm going to add some cat cow movement, pelvic tilt. So as you inhale, you rock forward into your pelvis, the heart lifts. And as you exhale, gather your belly, your tail sort of reaches towards your heels. Inhale, rock forward, heart lifts. Exhale, gather your belly, rock back. With the pace of your breath at your, as deep as you wanna go. Rocking with the length of your breath as you discover it. And see if you can really feel your pelvis rocking on the ground. Two more times. Big breath. And then begin some pelvic circles, drawing a big circle on the ground with your tailbone. Somebody can't get himself comfortable today. And going in the other direction. And pausing through center. Keeping your right heel 
in front of you, drawing it in a little bit, bring your left leg around you, around the back. Your right shin is sort of just straight across the front. Maybe your left knee comes towards your right heel. So it's almost, um, it's a sort of a side saddle seat. We're gonna not force the left sitting bone down. In fact, we're gonna bring it with us as we twist, lifting the left sitting bone, gently twisting right, inhaling, looking over your right shoulder. Exhale, rocking back down, the sitting bone towards the ground, looking over your left shoulder. Do about six of these. Each time you go, Gently exploring your range of motion softly. So you don't wanna push into the end limits, but to see how far you can go, taking extra time to stay with all the organs in your belly and pelvis, do three more. It's as if you're allowing the organs in your belly to go along with the twist. You spiral up from there, last two. It's this gentle rocking motion that we're starting with, starting easy rocking. To start to create an environment in the pelvis to soften the belly, last one. This time stay, stay in the twist. And come back to center, keeping your right hand behind you. We're gonna lift the hips up. You'll feel your knees on the ground, stretch way up. Imagine stretching from the left thigh through the left pelvis, the belly all the way up to the left hand. And slowly bring it down. And switch, bring your left leg in front of you, your right knee around, your right knee and left foot sort of touch, left hand behind you, taking your right hip with you as you twist. You might even feel a stretch in the thigh. It's a nice extra bonus of the way we're doing this. Mm. Or a big stretch in the thigh. Take your whole belly with you, your right hip. Feel the organs coming around into the twist. The heart move from the very middle of your body, exploring your range of motion. Just three more. And two more. And last one. Mm. And then weight in the left hand, lift your hips, right arm up, stretch the whole front body. You'll feel a stretch in the right thigh maybe. Press whatever's in the ground down and reach up, up, up. Imagine your belly stretching in both directions and all directions. And release. Slowly come to Virasana. One of the best positions for um, digestion. You could use one block today, two if you need, but I vote for one and none if you don't need a block at all. Placing the block underneath, widen your seat. Just one little more, one more little series to get the gut. Just sort of like flirting with the whole area between the navel and the back the sides, all the organs, helping them find their way to release down into the pelvis. We'll take cat cow in this virasana position. As you inhale, let the heart lift. You'll feel the pubic bone reaching towards the back of your block or towards your toes. Exhale, curl the tail towards your knees, hollow out the belly now, gather the belly to your back. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, gather belly to the back. Maybe exhale out your mouth. 
rocking the pelvis, pubic bone towards your toes, heart forward. Gather belly, tail towards your knees, empty the belly completely, pull the belly back, 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 back. Two more, activating inside the pelvis. On the exhale, a lot. And then just letting the inhale come to you as you rock forward. Pull back tersely as you exhale. And then just let the inhale fill you as you rock forward. I lied, we'll do two more. Terse drawing back of your navel towards your back. Inhale comes to you. And empty, last one. And pause. Pause in Virasana for just a breath, bringing your hands, actually one hand to the front of your belly, one hand to the back. You can put the back of your hand against your back. So your palm faces away from you and just allow the breath to be received in the space between your hands. So imagine your breath being received by a softening belly. And imagine your warm breath massaging tissue, the organs, the entire contents of your abdomen. Feel your body weight on the ground, feel your breath washing through your belly. Mm. All right. And we'll continue to look at this whole center with building heat, massaging the organs, we're preparing for more and more fluidity by the end of our practice. Coming to all fours, hands on your blocks, Stretch back your right leg and pause for a moment in one-legged plank. Gather your belly up. Inhale, lift the leg to the height of your hips. Gather your belly up. Inhale, look forward with your heart. Reach your heel back. Exhale, knee to nose. Two more. Inhale, heel back, heart forward. Exhale, knee to nose. One more time. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, stretch the leg back. Downward dog, gather your belly up. Both legs back, spread your toes a lot. Downward dog with your hands on your blocks. Bend your knees, press your belly toward your thighs. Take a big inhale here. And exhale, roll into plank pose. Gather your belly up just like the exhale of cat as you unfurl into plank. Inhale, bend your knees, belly back to thighs, down dog. Exhale, roll through to up dog. Inhale, push back belly to thighs. Exhale, gather your belly up, roll through your spine like a wave. Three more. Lots of action on the exhale in the belly to back as you unfurl. Inhale comes to you. One more time. Slowly bring your right knee to the ground and your left. Child's pose. If you can with your knees together, so maybe your belly is a little bit closer to your thighs, hands on your blocks. Draw your hips to your heels or reach through your fingertips. And imagine the breath massaging the organs of your abdomen in your back body, the back of your organs. Slowly curl up, slide your fingertips behind you. As you inhale, your pubic bone finds your toes like cat-cow. 
As you exhale, gather your belly, come back to neutral, maybe round a little bit. Just two more, inhale, rock through the pelvis. Exhale, gather your belly. So we're not only working deep in the belly and the psoas, but you're gonna start feeling the stretch up the front thighs one more time. And neutral. Come back to your blocks. Let's take the left leg to one-legged plank and pause. Spread through the ball of your foot. Feel the 3D shape inside the ball of your foot and inside your scalp. So you find the end points of the pose as you gather the belly up, back of your head, and lifting the leg. Use your leg muscles, inner leg muscles, and see. Reach the heel and the heart. Exhale, knee to nose, gathering your belly. Massaging your abdominal organs. With the exhale, pulling the knee in. Two more. You can mentally say hello to all the organs in your belly. And one more time, squeezing it back, letting the inhale fill you as you open. Put the toes down, downward dog. Bend your knees, press your belly towards your thighs. You can almost think of child's pose between the thighs and the belly. Pause for a moment as you feel the inhale come to you. Exhale, gather your belly, roll. Inhale, belly to thighs. Sitting bones to sky, roll on your exhale. Two more times. One more. Pause, bring your left knee down and your right knee down. Sit back in child, arms nice and long, and just let the effort go. Feel the breath bathing the back of your organs. There's a little bit of compression happening and rest. And slowly curl up. fingertips behind you, rocking the heart up as your pubic bone closed towards your toes. Exhale, gather belly to spine. Inhale, flow up. Exhale, option as you gather the belly, lift the hips. Inhale, the breath comes to you. Exhale, option to lift the hips, tail toward your knees. It's optional, please remember. Inhale to open. Exhale, you can just stay in the rounded version. We'll do two more. Yogi's choice. Last one. And release. Slowly coming back to all fours, except this time you can move your blocks and bring your forearms to the ground. Stretching your right leg back, your forearm plank pose, and then your left. Relaxing your jaw, your face, spreading into your footprints, the balls of your feet get bigger. Gather your belly. Getting a little bit of heat here. Challenging by with gravity to draw up and gather into the pelvis. And slowly laying in the knees, land, and coming down into Sphinx pose. So you can notice my elbows are right under my shoulders, my hands are shoulder distance apart. And it almost feels like I can drag my elbows to my pelvis. Drag my elbows to the pelvis. 
And just let my pelvis be heavy on the ground. Legs heavy, pelvis heavy. We're looking to open deep inside our bodies without effort in the pelvis, in the abdomen. So in other words, just letting the weight of your body be on the ground. And the effort is in gently dragging the elbows towards the pelvis. That will give you the stretch. Let's take three breaths into the belly here. So we're using our practice. We're using the yoga postures to not only connect with deep in our gut, to send energy there and breath, but to practice this back and forth between gathering and working and then releasing and letting go. We do that on each breath. We do a little bit of work and a little bit of release. One more breath here. Turn your head to the left, look over your left shoulder. Turn your head to the right, look over the right shoulder. Just to get a little more stretch up the front body, we're gonna come onto the palms, palms as wide as your mat, maybe the pinkies are on your mat and your hands are in line sort of with your jaw. Any amount of straight, this is a straight arm cobra. As you inhale, press up. As you exhale, lower. So the work is not in the belly. It's like you leave the weight of the heavy legs and pelvis on the ground. It's a little bit of a push up with the arms. And you let a stretch happen. In the belly. I know that a few of you are doing different healings. If this is too much, you can just lay on your belly on the ground. You don't need to actually stretch into the belly at all. You can lay in crocodile, which I'll do in a moment. In fact, continue on with the breath. If you find it too much to do that pose, you can come already to crocodile with your right cheek on the ground and your left knee out to the side. Otherwise, just two more. Slow, mindful movements. This is we're training our mind to be with the movement, with the breath, going with the flow of the breath. Feeling what we're doing as we're doing it, really coming into contact with sensation. One more time. And then release, bring your right cheek to the ground, stretch your left knee out to the side. We'll just take about five breaths on each side to be completely effortless, especially practice soft belly. What if you didn't have to do any work anywhere in the pelvis or belly and it could be flooded with your nutritious breath? Let the weight of your body drop into the ground. Imagine the breath opening and massaging the whole left inner pelvis, all the organs and muscles of your abdomen. And slowly release, we'll do the other side. Bringing the right knee out, coming to the left cheek. I'm not gonna bring my head down because of my mic, but you can let your whole body be effortless. Just five breaths into the right pelvis. Imagine the contents of your pelvis and abdomen being bathed by your breath. And 
and slowly release. Pressing from cobra all the way back to child. Bringing your knees together, let your belly rest on your thighs. Just one more child stretch by activating the arms nice and long. Pulling the hips back. We'll come to downward dog with hands on the ground. Slowly walk your hands, your feet to your hands, sorry. As you come to the front of your block, the front of your mat, your blocks nearby, flip your blocks up for a moment. You're gonna take one block widthwise, um, uh, so lengthwise, but in the wide form into the center space between your lower legs. So your feet are block distance apart. That might be a little too narrow. So I think that will probably be a good idea, but you can try it any which way if you like it. Your feet should be about hip distance apart as they hug the block. As you hug the block, bend your knees a lot. Squeeze the block gently with your shins. Bend your knees and then bring your hands to your outer thighs, right? Almost by your seat. So the game is gonna be shin squeeze your block but your thighs find your hands. Shin squeeze your block, but your thighs get wider. They find your hands. It's as if the upper inner thighs are opening like elevator doors and the lower legs are closing elevator doors. Upper thighs are opening elevator doors. Shins are closing elevator doors. And as you get that, you can let go with your hands. You don't need to hold your hands for the whole time. Bring your hands to the block or floor. And we're gonna take about five breaths with that action. Shins in, thighs wide, thighs out. Shins in, thighs out. And you're bringing a lot of energy into the pelvic floor, into the hips. This is great for the low back, especially this time of year. Shins in, thighs wide. Two more breaths. Any amount of forward fold you wanna add on to that, maybe come down, maybe put your head on your block. Maybe you want your legs a little more straight. Shins in, thighs wide. You might feel your feet spreading bigger inside. About one more breath, shins in, thighs wide. Inner thighs opening wide. And release. Hands on blocks, round up, stand. Hmm. Hey, getting a little deeper into this center area, keeping the shins and thighs wide. So what that means is your upper inner thigh, find your hands, your lower leg, find an imaginary block. Just imagine this as you stand. Feet just a little bit apart, almost hip distance apart, gaze forward. And imagine this subtle shins and thighs wide. So on a scale of one to 10, do it at like a four and a half. Four and a half, your shins are magnetizing towards each other, your lower leg. But like a four and a half, your upper inner thighs are widening apart. So it's not so much effort, it's just an awareness. And then let your abdomen rest in your pelvis. You might feel this all the way up your spine. You might feel your spine releasing all the way up into the neck, the cervical spine, into the head. Let your breath fill your back abdomen and low back. We'll add a moving twist, starting with your hands forward. Exhale, sweep down and around with the left hand as you open into a twist. Inhale back, exhale down and around right. Inhale back. Next time you get left, stay. Stretch the elbows apart. 
stretch the elbows apart, look over your back hand. Bring your back hand to your heart, your chest, your shoulder. Reach through the front hand, reach to your back elbow. And then stretch the arm back out. And release. Other side. Chins and thighs wide, the imaginary block between your lower leg, your inner thighs widening. As you look to your back hand, bring your back hand to your shoulder or your heart. Reach your back elbow and your front hand away from each other. Bring the arm back out and release. Pause. Hmm. And now the arms to sky. Exhale, hands to blocks. You can slide your blocks right by your heels as you step your left leg way back. For a lunge, feet are hip distance apart. You're just gonna take your blocks with you as you lower your knee to the ground. Bring your blocks right underneath your shoulders. Put more weight in your ball of your back foot than in your knee. So your back knee is barely on the ground. So you press a lot of weight in the ball of your back foot. And can you imagine what would it feel like if you did the shins hug an imaginary block and your upper inner thighs widen? You just have to imagine it. Take a big breath to fill your whole torso. Really nourishing all, like imagine moving all the bones of your pelvis from inside, your breath moving all the bones of your pelvis from inside. And just taking the blocks off your mat by your side. Hands can come inside your front foot. And we're going to lower into a little crocodile, walking the hands out a little bit. If you want to stretch through the right arm. If you prefer your knee off the ground, feel free. If you want to come all the way down to your forearms, feel free. You can rock a little bit. Walking back up, Let's turn towards the side of the mat, just let your feet flip around with you, bending your right knee deeply, getting an inner leg stretch all up the left leg. And switch. Back to the front leg, pause. And back leg. And walking through center, hold on. You're going to bring your hands to the block. So we're like in a wide leg forward fold for a moment. Bend your knees a lot. Lengthen your crown. And then feel free to walk your hands out like downward dog, pulling your hips back. Walk your hands out nice and long. Imagine getting space between your pelvis and your rib cage. And walk it back. Walking back to the front of your mat. You have your blocks back at the front of your mat. We'll take a little twist here. Left hand to your block, right hand to sky. You can have your back knee on the ground if you prefer. Option to bring your right hand behind your head. Press your head into your hand. Press your head into your hand a lot. And release. Forward step. And just for a breath or two, you can return a block between your shins, hands to the outer hip, shins and thighs wide. It's a great, great technique for this whole season, shins and thighs wide. Imagine the inner thighs opening like elevator doors, any amount of forward fold. So good for the low back. So good for opening up that downward motion, release. Releasing both blocks, bend your knees, dive up. 
and stand for a moment, spreading your feet. Just imagine a little bit of that action, shins and thighs wide. So on a scale of one to 10, do it at now like a three. So it's subtle, but you know which direction everything is in. You feel it a little bit, but it's super subtle. And taking the left arm up to the sky, shins and thighs wide as you take a side lean. So maybe as you go over to the left side, keep your right hand on your thigh and from your inner thigh muscles, widen into your hands. Both inner thigh muscles widen apart. Let your breath move your pelvic bones from inside your body. Mm. Inner side, left hand to the thigh, right arm to ear. Shins hug an imaginary block. Inner thighs open like elevator doors. Waking up also just the... Um, all the meridians and the lines of the inner and outer thighs. And release, inhale, stretch both arms to the sky. Exhale, dive forward, hands to blocks. Take your right leg back, I'm gonna face the other direction. You just have to step your right leg back. Knee to ground, slide the blocks back under your shoulders and put more weight in the ball of your back foot even spread through the whole ball of your back foot. Less weight in your knee, more weight in the feet. Can you allow the contents of your abdomen to sort of find the whole pelvic bowl? You don't have to hold your shoulders up. Just let your breath move inside your body. The activity is in the feet mostly. And then moving your blocks onto the, off your mat, option to come down, hands inside your front foot. Maybe you wanna come down onto your forearms, maybe not. So you stretch through your left arm a lot. And slowly bring it back up. Lifting your back knee, spinning it to center, bending your left knee deeply, get the stretch of the inner right leg. Another side. And switch. And one more time. Hands to your block, bend both knees deeply. We'll take a little twist here to finish this series off. Your feet are parallel and just twist up. You can bring your, actually your right hand out to the side and then only bring the right hand up as much as the torso twists the hand up. So you don't have to bring your hand behind you. Option to look down or side or up. Option to put your hand behind your head. And release. Other side, you can still sense the shins in, thighs wide. That's going to be really nice here. Twisting only as much as you can still see the hand. Hand behind you is optional. And release. And then one more moment here. Shins in, thighs wide. Bend your knees, shins in, thighs wide. And slowly walk it back, taking the twist. Your knee can be on or off the ground, hand to block or not. Left arm up, gazes wherever it feels most comfortable for your neck. If you like the option of hand behind the head and there's no pain with that, feel free. And release, meeting back in downward dog. And then all the way, knees to ground. 
child's pose. Hmm. Curling up. So this mindful sort of slow but deep practice opening up the pelvis, opening up the area of the whole abdomen sets us up gorgeously for our constructive rest. I'm gonna do a little bit of an elevated constructive rest so that um, you could feel expansive in your breathing, maybe a little extra um, sort of support under your low back. I vote for taking one blanket or two, depending on how much you want this to be a chest opener. You're welcome to have the two over your, um, under your back. Actually, I think I'll do that. Make it a little bit of a, so that's optional. You can have one or two. What I'm gonna do is keep an extra blanket placed over my legs. Really don't need the blocks anymore. Um, you could have one block between your thighs as an option. So the strap is going to go through your legs and it's gonna be there so that you, your, your legs can sort of fall open into the strap. So the way to gauge that is about a block distance. If you had a block between your knees or maybe you wanna use your block that way, it's pretty nice. And then you have your strap right in the middle of your thigh and you make the strap just tight enough so that the block is held <clears throat> between your knees and the strap holds your thighs together. If you don't have a strap and a block, just the blanket will do, right? So I'm gonna show you what to do with the blanket once I get down. I'm gonna come down onto my blankets under my back. Again, you can have one or two blankets, Yogi's Choice. They're both nice. They're both nice. If you're not used to doing constructive rest, I'd use only one under your back. My heels are pretty close. I can almost touch them. Again, if you're not used to doing constructive rest, please only use one blanket under your back. It's just a more natural tilt. Then for the final, I'm gonna place that folded blanket over my legs evenly. So it adds this weight that plugs your femur bones, your thigh bones back into your pelvis and really sets them deep to ground. It's a way of telling the psoas muscle to, that it, there's just no effort needed and there can be sort of less engagement. I'm gonna take my little weight and place it on top of my hip points. The strap and the block around the legs and between the legs are optional. The blanket is optional. You can use a combination of all of them or, um, or any one of them. You can have your hands on your body or by your side. This is one of my favorite poses to meditate in. It's one of my favorite poses to use therapeutically whenever I'm going through gut tension, low back, discomfort, uh, anxiety, <laughs> um, autumn. This pose is really one of my um, most frequently used restoratives because it brings me right into relationship with the way I feel in my gut. It heightens my attention to where I'm over gripping in my groin or my seat, in my digestive area, my reproductive area, my sacrum. It shows me where I'm holding on uh, too tightly. And it invites me to soften breath by breath. So this is a process 
of release. You can imagine almost like the way you'd go petal by petal on a daisy, the way you might take a hundred petal lotus and go one petal at a time, one breath at a time, one petal at a time. You just meet an area that's doing a little more work than it needs to be. And you bless it with your breath and you bless it with your attention. And you invite it to rest and be at ease. So I'm gonna invite you now to just use the next few breaths to feel where the ground is meeting you. Trust that you can be held up underneath your head, your back. your seat, your feet. And as the ground meets you and holds you up, you can work less everywhere. can soften your belly to receive your breath more deeply. Let your breath be received by a softening belly. You could tune into the space in your pelvis. Let your body land on the ground. Allow your breath as it flows in to move all the way down into your belly. You just notice the belly fills and expands with the inhale. And it gently falls back softly on the exhale. You don't need to use any muscles in your seat or your thighs, your groins or your belly. Just imagine your breath is caring for your belly. Your, your breath is the solvent, the digestive solvent. It's not only a nourishing elixir, it's a loosening agent. It's the ingredients that you, that initiates the process of digestion and actually facilitates it. So all you need to do is allow the breath to flow, nothing to force, nothing to do, just allowing the breath to wash through you. And since this belly area is this emotional center, the center that's so much life is held in, in so many complex ways, there's might be a lot that bubbles up in the form of sensation or thoughts or emotion. And we're simply practicing letting it all be, letting it all rise and fall. You don't have to hold on to any of the experiences. 
sensation, emotion, thought, they can all rise and fall and be present without us actually holding on to them. As I offer you this beautiful teaching by Dana Falls, you could continue to relax and release into your shape. Let go of the ways you thought life would unfold. The holding of plans or dreams or expectations. Let it all go. Save your strength to swim with the tide. The choice to fight what is here before you now will only result in struggle, fear, and desperate attempts to flee from the very energy you long for. Let go. Let it all go and flow with the grace that washes through your days, whether you receive it gently or with all your quills raised to defend against invaders. Take this on faith. The mind may never find the explanations that it seeks, but you will move forward nonetheless. Let go and the waves crest will carry you to unknown shores beyond your wildest dreams or destinations. Let it all go and find the place of rest and peace and certain transformation. You can linger in this pose as long as you wish. If you're closing with practice, just do feel your hands on your body, the caring gesture of your hands meeting the caring breath underneath them. Use your own hands to send a message, a gentle, caring message of presence to your own body to your soul, to your spirit, to your body, to your mind. Let your own presence send a message of warmth and welcomeness to yourself that is a key ingredient in the process of release and digestion. Grace and gratitude, your own presence, a key ingredient to your own ability. to flow along with the process of life. Since you'll be carried along, nonetheless, go with grace. Take your time if you would like to close with us to come to a finishing seat. Otherwise, please linger again as long as you wish in this pose. When you're ready, bringing your hands to Anjali or the caring expression of your hands on your body in any way. And today, may you just practice with awareness, remembering everything changes, everything rises and falls, all things must pass. As we remember this process, may we stay grounded and open and fluid with this natural cycle. May we go with grace. Thank you so much for practicing today. Thank you, Deanna, <laughs> for making this possible for all of us. And I look forward to practicing with you. What date are we even in? Um, see you again next week. 
and we're gearing up towards our mini retreat soon. Maybe you want to share that with some friends as well. We have a really fun, um, some fun giveaway stuff around the, the, the mini retreat that you'll be seeing posted soon. So stay tuned for that, as well as some other exciting adventures and opportunities that we're cooking up over here that we'll be announcing soon. So I look forward to sharing this all with you through email, through social media. If you'd like the poem, I know many of you really um, would like a copy of that poem. It's already on my Instagram and we'll send it in the follow-up as well. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, Lauren. I'm so glad that you're able to be on the broadcasts and recordings. Alistair and Joyce. Oh my God, you guys are going to make me cry. Ah, my cousin and my aunt are here practicing with us. I love you guys. <clears throat> wow, you really cheered me up there. Thanks. <laughs> Skyla, thank you. So the strap made a difference. Yeah, I love that strap and constructive rest. Thank you, thank you Loretta, Lindsay, Kristen. Amazing release. Yeah, you guys practice that constructive rest all season. The rest of the season, I'm telling you, it's going to be a good one. Renee, thank you. So glad that it served you, especially on your West Coast foggy morning. Thank you, Dina and Margie. Powerful stuff, simple and powerful, super potent. You are right. Thank you, Sarah, Elizabeth. I'm so glad you were here. Thank you, Sun Leah, for the common grounding practice. Sheila, steady presence, healing and blessings to you and strength. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. I'm so glad you found it nourishing. And Julie, yeah, this was a, this was a surprising one, by the way. It seemed gentle, but let me tell you, you will continue to feel the effects of this throughout the day today. Thank you, Katya. Strap allows to trust and let go, yes. And Jane, thank you. Combination of effort and ease. Blessing the tension in the body. I'm so glad you did that. Love the new version of the CRP, the constructive rest pose. Beautiful, thank you, Alma and Sheila. The poem, perfect complement to the practice, yes. Yeah, don't forget, go back and use the meditation. And Carol, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Much love to everybody. Have a healing day. And I will see you guys all next week. Thank you, Dina. Thank you, Ellen. Wishing everybody a week of grace. Namaste. Take care. <laughs>